I'm Dr. David Ficker from the University of Cincinnati. I'm here with Yoko Nagai, who's at Brighton and Sussex Medical School. She's here to tell us about her research. Tell us about what you presented here today at the AES meeting. My research over the last 15 years was to develop and um, uh, investigate electrodermal biofeedback therapy for epilepsy. I'm an in inventor of this uh, therapy. Okay. What yeah. is what is electrodermal biofeedback? Yeah. So biofeedback is a process that involves making us aware of our physiological changes in the hope of bringing those processes under conscious control. So we are usually not aware of our physiological responses such as heart rate or respiration or skin conductivity. However, using biofeedback, now we are able to access to those physiological responses. So it is a way to control our uncontrollable inner body function. Yeah. So what did your research show? Yes, so um, I did a clinical trial using ele electrodermal biofeedback. Um, the, my first research was uh, published in 2004, and this was uh, a randomized controlled trials with 18 patients with drug-resistant epilepsy. And so far, 60% pa 60 patient, 60 of patients showed more than 50% seizure reduction. Okay. Uh, after one month of treatment, uh, this means after a month of therapy, the patient uh, seizure frequency became less than half, and this was shown in 60% of patients. Okay. And your research you're presenting here looked at functional MRI That's and correct, functional yes. MRI changes yeah. with That's biofeedback. Correct. What did that show? Yes. We are currently conducting a wider clinical trial with 50 patients with temporal lobe epilepsy. And uh, we are also investigating detailed neural mechanisms using a combined EEG and functional MRI. Okay, and what did you find here? What did the functional the MRI most, show? Um, yeah, we are looking at the neural connectivity changes before and after the therapy. So when we perform biofeedback with electrodermal activity, we tend to um, uh, uh, activate the frontal part of the brain. So I'm looking at the neural connectivity changes between the frontal part of the brain and the rest of the brain. And the most interesting finding so far is a weakened connectivity between the frontal part of the brain and amygdala, which is responsible for our stress uh, anxiety. So the implication of this uh, study is it seems that patient becomes less vulnerable to stress-related or anxiety-related uh, uh, see the triggers after the therapy. Okay. What are your next steps uh, the in next this research? The next steps is um, we are currently developing the world's first digital form of the therapy platform. Okay. And the idea is to um, expand the accessibility of this therapy for more patients with epilepsy. And so I'm aiming to conduct a wider clinical trial with a drug study level, so up to 500 patients. Okay. Do you think this will be a, a viable treatment option for people with I contractible so, epilepsy? Yes. I believe so, yes. Okay. What are the advantage, What would be some advantages of using this uh, the, in the treatment of epilepsy? The advantage is this is non-invasive okay. and uh, this is also accessible all over the world okay. and also affordable. Okay. 